interpreter of musical notes. She was, had a photogenic memory. She could read her lyrics and she knew them. So then she could spend the rest of her time performing coming from her heart. In a rare and emotional sit-down with Billboard's executive director of R&B hip-hop, Gail Mitchell, Aaliyah's reclusive uncle, Barry Hankerson, opened up about his niece's legacy, plus exclusively revealed her music will soon be hitting streaming platforms. It's been a long time since the fans could enjoy Aaliyah and other artists on our catalog. There's been a lot of changes in the music business since we took the music off the market, so we want to be sure to be with the right people the right executives, and to give ourselves the right time to uh, do different things. When you add all that up, it was a couple of years before we could even really consider putting the music out. Hankerson founded Black Round Records back in 1993, specifically as a vehicle to support Aaliyah's music career, with a nudge from his sister, Diane. My sister's a great singer on her own. She never really got the chance to explore that part of her, her, her life. She did not want her daughter not to get that opportunity. That was the first practical step when somebody wanted me to do that. And the next practical step was to figure out how to do that. So I convened with Quincy Jones. I convened with so many people. P. Diddy was a person I convened with. I admired him so much. In fact, the first single we had uh, back and forth was uh, very contested at Jive. The owner of Jive, Clive Calder, didn't think it was a hit record. I fervently believe that it was. The question was, well, how are we gonna get this to the public? Aaliyah shot a music video for Back and Forth and through personal connections, Hankerson was able to premiere the visual before a popular boxing fight, and it was an instant hit, propelling her first record onto the airwaves. I picked stations that had great cities and great listening audiences, and I sent them promotional copies with the caveat so every station agreed to play it at a certain time. So when it went on, it was an explosion of that record. The kids knew that record. They knew it by sight. They didn't know it by ear. They liked to see a record. That's when I just really realized how powerful video was, video was and how photogenic Aaliyah was. And the little coat she wore was a fireman's jacket. And it literally, people were selling and buying fireman jackets after she wore that began to be a kind of a trend, and that's when Aaliyah was kind of getting recognized right off the bat as somebody that had her finger to the pulse of style. And she went on to wear some iconic outfits, and I can't talk about it much, I'll just... But Aaliyah's sudden death in a plane crash in August 2001 at the age of 22 eventually led to her most beloved works going out of print. But now, in a new partnership with Bay Area-based independent distributor, label, and publisher Empire, the entire Black Round catalog, not just Aaliyah's works, but 17 albums by artists including Timbaland and Magoo, Tank, Tony Braxton and JoJo will be available to stream for the first time ever and for both physical and digital purchase for the first time in a decade. So why now? On August 25th, 2020, on the 19th anniversary of Aaliyah's death, her estate, ran by Aaliyah's mother along with her older brother Rashad, released a statement through the singer's official Twitter account writing, we are excited to announce that communication has commenced between the estate and various record labels about the status of Aaliyah's music catalog, as well as its availability on streaming platforms platforms in the near future. For Hankerson, the statement was a long-awaited green light. I'll be very candid with you. Since the death of my niece, I don't have the same relationship I used to have with my sister. We were very close. But when you lose a child or a niece that you really loved, it was difficult for my family. So a lot of things in my family changed. I really got my cue that she, my sister was ready to put the music out because she said so on the internet. I would have never dreamed that's the way I would have heard it. But she said, it's time to put the music out because there was a conversation we had that she didn't want the music out. And whatever my sister told me, I tried to do what she wanted me to do. As a, as a parent, I would understand if she did not want the music out because who wants to hear the voice of your daughter 
who's gone. Diane does not approve of the catalog's release. The Aaliyah estate made it clear to Billboard that they do not support the deal between Hankerson and Empire, which they claim they were left out of, despite reaching out to Blackround last August in hopes of participating. But Hankerson says his efforts were met with silence, so the plans with Empire are now in place. August 20th will see the release of One in a Million, followed weekly by a rough approximation of the original chronology of Blackground releases. Hankerson will also be relaunching Blackground as a new frontline label with distribution through Empire. When asked what Hankerson initially hoped to do when he first started Blackground, as compared to the label's mission statement today, he said this. A very special signing of, of, of talent. As a black person, um, the only really resource that we have as a people in America are artists and music. An artist helps you bring forth what your people are about. And I had the good fortune to work with some of the biggest artists that ever lived. I was once married to Gladys Knight, which is still one of my favorite artists. I had so many mission statements, and I'm still, I'm still looking at mission statements. I'm now really caught up to ha trying to help foster a, a, a system that an, an artist can come to some place and get heard and seen. I really, really hope that in this next phase of Blackground, we can spot talent that maybe doesn't fit the cookie cutter of what an artist is and bring them forward on our own platform to give them an opportunity to be seen. But there are still obstacles standing in the way. On January 15th, 2021, the day before what would have been Aaliyah's 42nd birthday and five months after tweeting that negotiations with labels had begun, Aaliyah's estate tweeted another message addressed to fans. We hear you and we see you. While we share your sentiments and desire to have Aaliyah's music released, we must acknowledge that these matters are not within our control and unfortunately take time. Adding, while we understand this may be challenging, we need the support of the fans Aaliyah loves so dearly until we can resolve all the issues in freeing her music. And though Hankerson took the estate's first statement on Twitter as a sign of new willingness to engage, he has not personally spoken to his sister about the matter. I'm very prayerful that she enjoys what we're doing. I'm prayerful that she supports what we're doing, but at the end of the day, we'll all find out probably at the same time. I miss her and I love her. I wish we had the same relationship we had years ago. I love my sister. Black Round owns the masters to Aaliyah's recordings, and because she did not write her own music or lyrics, the estate also has no stake in the song's publishing copyrights. Meanwhile, there are currently no plans to release a posthumous album of Aaliyah music, but Hankerson has been hard at work on new songs. We have some features uh, on some unreleased masters with people such as uh, Drake, Future, and Snoop. Snoop was one of Aaliyah's favorite rappers, so Snoop was also a good friend of ours. He came right in and did a feature, it's really awesome. Neo, um, and there's one artist that I can't mention yet, but uh, he's one of the king streaming artists of the world. So you could probably maybe figure out who he is. Timberland has been very gracious and very supportive in lending his talent to any of the songs we wanted him to remix or to do a feature with. We have a feature from um, Chris Brown, Tim did that track for us. Hankerson will also be rolling out a new streaming app called Music 360, which will house those new Blackground remixes and releases. And when asked about the criticism he's received over the years for holding back Aaliyah's catalog, he said this. You just can't help but either read it or someone reads it to you. So it's been, it's been hurtful at times because my intentions were honest and good. I wanted to bring the consumer all of the music that they wanted to enjoy again. But again, I wanted to make sure it worked right, it was with the right people, so when it came out, they could have access to it. When it comes out, they can maybe even get it at a lesser price than before. Uh, vinyl was gonna come out, because if you own a vinyl, that's yours forever. All of that takes time. It's not instant, like you just go throw it out. Then they'd be talking about how raggedy you threw it out and you put the record out. So we got a couple of features that we normally wouldn't have had. That took time. People had schedules. Everybody that we asked to do a feature jumped at doing it. It was wonderful to see the love from so many superstars who said, well, I'd love to do a feature on anything Aaliyah did. It took a while to do this, and I hope the fans forgive me once they get it and they got it, you got it. The only part that has been a little distasteful has been so many people angry with me because the music didn't come out when they wanted it. But uh, I learned to live with that. 
And finally, reflecting on his own career, when asked if there were any mistakes he would go back and fix if he could, Hankerson chose what ultimately led to Aaliyah's passing. We wouldn't have shot the last video on Aaliyah. 